My name is uh, Lou Katzos, and I'm the president and founder of EMCA, the East Mediterranean Business Culture Alliance. Uh, it's a new organization which we started uh, last September. We've already had a couple of events, spectacular events. Uh, one at the Russian Tea Room, another one in, uh, at the uh, consulate, the Greek consulate. And tonight uh, we're at the Three West Club and we're having a presentation by Dr. Vlahos, a very well-known commentator, professor, author, uh, geopolitical strategist. And uh, Dr. Vlahos's um, talk or presentation is, is entitled, uh, The Empires Strike Back. Uh, will the U.S. get in a major war in the next 18 months? This is uh, part of the uh, series of different events that we're having, which are, which are different, and part of the reason why uh, myself and a few other colleagues uh, formed EMCA, to do uh, events that are, that are a little bit different than, than the events that have taken place uh, with many other organizations. Uh, we're relating to the uh, Eastern Mediterranean, which was the cradle of society, uh, where, where um, many of the things that we, that we acknowledge as being the finest things in, in the West and in the East and where they came from. It involves really uh, from Northern Africa, let's say from Libya, all the way around the Mediterranean into, into Greece and into, and into the Balkans. So we have a bunch of exciting events, a new organization, and uh, what I'd like to do for this evening's event is just introduce uh, John, our Vice President, uh, who will introduce Dr. Blake. Thank you. Good evening, uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, John Fodiatis, uh, Vice President of EMCA, this, uh, this burgeoning, exciting organization, the East Mediterranean Business Culture Alliance. As the 24-hour uh, media cycle constantly reports in real time events that are changing the world order as we've known it for the last two decades, one can't help but feel that we're moving towards an inflection point. Moreover, in less than a year, in what's proving to be one of the most tumultuous election seasons in recent memory, the United States will elect a new president. Regardless of uh, who is elected, that individual will face a new geopolitical reality in which the U.S. for the first time in its modern history will no longer be global hegemon, the capo di tutti capi of uh, global superpowers. What does this mean for the United States and the rest of the world? Where is it all going? Our guest this evening will lend us some insight. I first encountered Dr. Vlaos when I heard him on the John Bachelor Show on WABC here in New York. I was transfixed by what he was saying, articulate and thoughtful, provocative, and projecting through the prism of history. His commentary on the state of the world and our role in it seemed to be coming at me like a voice from the wilderness. He was explaining not only what was happening, but why. Dr. Vlahos is a historian, a professor, a former intelligence officer, and a foreign affairs and national security expert. And as I mentioned, he's widely known for his frequent uh, media appearances. We'll continue that conversation tonight, as it's appropriately titled, The Empires Strike Back, Can America Avoid Major War in the Next 18 Months? Please join me in welcoming Dr. Michael Vlahos.
outside of Aleppo. And um, what we see now, though, in very troubling ways, is the prospect of, of clashes between great powers. Uh, there is a, a looming confrontation with China, which will happen. And I don't know when it will happen and how it will happen and what it will lead to, but it is in the cards. And um, I say that simply because I was part of a naval delegation Possibility of reconciliation with China. Uh, we've had uh, issues with Russia and a lot of scare talk, um, much of it from uh, American uh, experts. Experts, and and yet um, we're in a world now where a conflict isn't simply in the lower levels of, um, uh, of like fighting, the kind of face to face. Shootings and uh, explosions of people that we've been um, almost inured to over the last 15 years, but but there is conflict now at higher levels, and and yet I have to say there are connections between the prospects for conflict with a great power, something that might possibly lead to a major war, and the kind of lower level conflict that, that we have tried to, you know, tamp down, what we call terrorism, asymmetrical warfare, unconventional warfare. I don't see much of a difference between the prospect of a formal clash that involves vehicles and, and various weapon systems that look like they were descendants of World War II and the kind of fighting that we see in Iraq or Syria or Afghanistan or Niger Yemen or Libya, well, Somalia, can I go on? No. The fact is, the prospect of war between great powers simply enlarges the scope of conflict that we see everywhere in the world and flings it out to the whole world. And this is the worrisome aspect to me is, is what kind of dynamic, you know, dynamics, what kind of power is pushing humanity to conflict as the solution. I won't say war, but fighting. Direct conflict. What is the impetus toward a world in which we see conflict everywhere? And uh, it is a tremendous thing to be uh, avoided. That is where things get really scary. And what I see today is all of the energy Leads in this country focus on tamping it down, preventing it from happening. And this always is what happens, but it won't stop it. So uh, my my sense is, as I used to tell military and defense audiences all through the first decade of this century, is let what I call the Muslim Renovatio, let it happen. Let them figure out what what they want to be. Let the Sunni world go through whatever it's going to go through. Couldn't do it, and we made it infinitely worse year by year, and, and feasted upon fraudulent, foolish confections like counterinsurgents and other amazing uh, uh, rabbit holes that we went down, hoping to find a solution to stopping something that couldn't be stopped. And I, I just think that that's all, uh, in, the, 
in a way, come home. That we need to understand that allowing a, a renewal of society itself and of our connections with each other is really what is, is being sought. And people feel uh, as insecure, as afraid, as uncertain as they do, not simply because of base economic reasons, but because of an unraveling uh, next weekend, on March uh, 24th, we will have a development, design, and construction uh, uh, panel discussion uh, entitled, entitled um, In Search of the Golden Fleece, which again, we expect to be very well attended. On April 14th, uh, we will have uh, a completely unique event that's never taking place before. It's called the Eastern Mediterranean uh, Harlem blues concert and what we're doing to, uh, is bringing two cultures together uh, relating to the, uh, to the blues, the musical blues. And uh, on the African American side of course we know the blues and on the Eastern Mediterranean side of course many of us know the Rebetica. So we've, we have uh, three spectacular groups that we'll be playing and that's going to be at St. Peter's uh, Church. On uh, May 21st we're going to have the second National Hellenic American Genealogy Conference which is going to be at, uh, in Chicago at the uh, National Hellenic Museum. And on uh, June 21st, we're going to have, as part of the Global Compact, we're going to have a, 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 a peace, a business and peace uh, panel discussion, uh, which again will be made up of many of the participants who will be partaking in the, global, uh, the UN Global Compact, which is going to take place on June 22nd and 23rd.